Finding the uh, the seven series, then Ben. It's a it's a really good wafter, isn't it? It's very comfortable. Yeah, and it's smooth. It sounds is. fantastic as well. It, the sound is a joke, isn't it? <laughs> you know, it's probably the polar opposite to your R8. Yeah, yeah. There couldn't be two more far away from cars on the spectrum could they i don't think so i no. think you're on the spectrum aren't you brilliant do you reckon i can have a go like as a as a passenger yeah no i want to i want to give it to like take it out for a spin you having a laugh no <laughs> come on just you Honestly. you're my driver mate you you drive me and you give me the keys to that r8 you know what there it is oh isn't she beautiful good looking car though isn't it joel beautiful mate Beautiful. Get out of this car now, open the door, give me the keys to your R8, please. Come on, then. I don't know, honestly, who you think you are. Ever since you bought this limo. Don't slam the doors, they're soft clothes. Look at that. What's the colour? Brilliant red. Yeah, I'm going to film now, so... You. Why don't you get back in there and play with the toys, Ben? <laughs> This is my friend Ben's 2009 Audi R8. So it's the earliest generation of the R8. It's got a manual gearbox, gated manual, which is something I'm very excited about, um, and a 4.2 litre V8 engine. Ben has very kindly, but slightly reluctantly, as you just saw, given me the keys to go and have a little spin in it today. What I really want to explore today is actually whether there's sort of any reason that you shouldn't go ahead and just buy one of these cars. Obviously not everyone can afford to do so, I certainly can't. Um, they're around 30 to 40 grand on the used market, depending on mileage, age, condition, all of those normal things. I think this one sat somewhere in the middle of that. It's on about 40,000 miles and it's had a couple of modifications done to it. So probably in the middle of that sort of price bracket. But as with my 7 Series, which Ben is fondling with now, God knows what he's doing in the back of there. That sort of represented for me the sort of best way that you can spend 5,000 pounds and I think this R8, maybe this and like a V8 Vantage, which I'm yet to sort of have on the channel, they represent the sort of best way to spend 30 to 40 grand. So yeah, I wanna jump in it now, take it out, have some fun with it, and we'll just really explore whether there's any reasons that you actually shouldn't go ahead and just buy one of these. in the market. 
market is a bit of a 911 competitor, but where a 911 didn't look like a, a supercar, this really did. And there's certain design elements of this car which I still believe have aged pretty well. Namely, uh, the front headlights. I think they, they could be on a brand new car. You wouldn't know. Let's just give it a little... Oh, 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 oh. oh wow. Uh, also, I think the carbon sort of side panels, which I think are a must-have on this car, also fit the car superbly well. Really nice. In terms of this particular car, there's a couple of things on it which I wouldn't have done personally. I don't know if Ben's done them or a previous owner did them. Um, but things such as the wing on the back, the carbon fiber wing, does look fantastic, but for me, I personally prefer the stock and moving um, wing that comes with these cars normally. Also, the tinted windows, for me, sort of ruin the sort of sleek, fine look of it a little bit, and I think don't really add too much. So I probably wouldn't do the tint on the windows. In terms of the wheels, they're standard wheels, except they've been resprayed in a sort of gunmetal grey type colour. They look great. I would probably go for some aftermarket wheels on this car, actually, um, just to modernise it somewhat. But other than that, I think it's a superbly good-looking car. And again, for that sort of price bracket we're talking about today, you're talking F-Type, V8 Vantage, things like that that might sit alongside it. And they're all supremely good-looking cars, but I don't think this R8 lacks behind. So I do need to run a couple of errands today. However, I think we'll go back up a nice road and just get to grips with the car a little bit more. I think is a bit 
what's it like to park? Well, you know what, the turning circle's very good. The bonnet at the front, because it just contains my boot, is not that far ahead. So, it's pretty easy to place. The visibility, actually, out the back is a little bit obstructed by Ben's crazy carbon fibre wing. But all out the side, you've got the sort of big, meaty arches sticking out. But, really good visibility. How practical is it, though? So, Ben, the owner of this R8, actually bought me a present. Well, I thought it would only be fair to buy him a present as well. So I've taken it upon myself to get him a pink unicorn. I know that he loves this sort of thing. But more importantly, and back to the video, is the R8 practical enough to fit a pink unicorn in the boot? And I say boot, it's a fruit. Let's give it a go. Like with a little bit of persuasion. There we go. Happy days. So there we go. It is practical enough to fit a pink unicorn in the boot. So we can proceed with the video, I think. I think the last comment I'll make sort of on this car is it makes you feel really special, which is something that I think is genuinely lost from a lot of new cars. I'm sitting right behind an M140i. I owned an M240i a few months back and knew they are around the same, if not a little bit more than an R8. And obviously they're a completely, completely different type of car. But a lot of people that buy M140i's, M240i's, are buying them largely for their sporty nature. However, however good they are, they do not have the balance that this mid-engine car has. They do not give you the same feel that this gearbox gives you. And they don't make you feel special because on the inside, it's just a one series or a two series with a couple of extra M's. And you know, everyone and their dog has one these days. This, it just makes you feel special. And I don't know of many other cars that are around this price point that do that. I really don't. It's a bit windy, isn't it? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, yeah, so as I was saying, yeah, you bought me this. You're welcome. By I the thought, way. Uh, you know, as he gave me such a kind, well, kind gift, yeah, that I can certainly use all the time. I yeah. thought I'd do the same for you. Okay, I thought well, I'd give you something that you can use as well. I look, what? <laughs> There's no way you could have got a number. It's plate. not a dildo, Ben. Don't get excited. Oh, okay. You ready? Okay. Actually, look away. Look away. Look away. Oh, for God's sake. What could it be? You've only been... <laughs> there you go! <laughs> How much of a tit did you look buying this? I don't care, mate. It's worth it just for you. Thank you, mate. I love it. Anyway, <laughs> thanks, Ben, for uh, letting me drive the R8. That was a lot of fun. I think the guys watching will have seen how much I enjoyed it. It sounded like you enjoyed it. I did. I did. I, I could did. hear you. This, this road... About a what? mile away. Yeah. Essentially. It is loud. It it's, is loud. It's very loud. It's very but windy. Yeah, thanks uh, to Ben for that. Go actually to Ben's channel because he's doing a video on my 7 Series. And I know a lot of you are fond of that car. So we're just going to film some bits for it now, actually. So go over to Ben's channel uh, if you haven't already and check that video out. Um, and yeah, guys, thanks so much for watching this one. Let's give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed already if you're not. And I'll see you in the next one very soon.